everyone, this is Rudolph Wilkins with Forgotten Fitness, and today I will be discussing with you the Gironda Neck Press, also known as the Guillotine Press. Now this title is somewhat unjust and undeserving. They call it the Guillotine Press because of the manner in which the motion touches your neck, but in reality it is not a very dangerous exercise. It doesn't have to be in particular, and a lot of the reason it's very dangerous is because people practice it with improper technique. It's an exercise that really is not very difficult to perform, but if you don't take advantage of certain tips and tricks that are laid out in pieces of literature such as the Wild Physique or Larry Scott's Loaded Guns, you can miss out on a lot of the important details that you may not get from photos alone. So in this video, I plan on demonstrating it for you with proper technique and explaining how this exercise can benefit you in the long run. Okay, so as I like to do in all these videos, I'm going to explain the movement to you and why you may want to perform it. So first of all, it must be noted that you do not want to attempt this exercise with any high amount of weight relative to your own strength, especially in the beginning. There is no photo online available or any photo in any book of anybody in Vince's gym using more than 135 pounds on this exercise. Keep it light, keep the form tight, and you'll definitely reap the benefits. So first of all, it can be performed on a free weight barbell or a Smith machine. Uh, certain athletes like Larry Scott actually preferred a Smith machine as he wouldn't have to worry about stabilizing the barbell and he could really focus on his pectorals. So the Gironda neck press is a supine press which means it's performed on a flat bench press and it is designed specifically to isolate the pectorals and eliminate anterior deltoid assistance. So that's your front deltoid which gets activated heavily on a standard bench press. Your back should remain flat on the bench. Your arch is very minimal, if none at all. This exercise requires a fairly flat back. When positioning your hands, this is very critical and you see this often performed incorrectly. You wanna grip the bar very wide and you want to twist the palms inwards. So in the photo in the upper right, you can see that I'm doing that with this barbell. I've twisted my hands inwards and I'm sort of resting the barbell on the bony part of my palm and on the part of my index finger right below the lower joint. So when descending, this is mentioned in Larry Scott's Loaded Guns, you want to flare the elbows out wide and keep them in line with the shoulder at all points of the movement, the top and the bottom. You don't want to let your elbows touch your side or get pulled down to your side as that'll become a more standard bench press and that'll take the stress off the pectorals. You want to chase the pain you don't want to avert it. This exercise is designed to really stretch out those pectorals unlike any other lift you've really ever felt. Some individuals in particular, depending on your own flexibility, may be able to raise the elbows to the ears, but this, is, this really depends on your own flexibility and you need to try this exercise out yourself to see if you're able to do that. And like, like I mentioned previously, you want to chase the pain and Larry in particular did six burnouts at the very end of every set which was only a partial that was about one-fourth of the total range of motion really just to burn the pecs as much as possible and a key note here is to always control the weight there should be no time in this movement where you are not in control of the weight fully so in the next slide I will demonstrate it for you and if any of you have any questions just leave them in the comment section and I'll respond to them immediately so as you can see, I am seated on a standard bench press. Just lay down on it. You want to have those palms rotated and you can see I just did that. And I myself really like the what they call a suicide grip or an open grip. And Larry Scott also did this. And this would help in keeping your forearms out of the equation when it comes to the pressing, pressing motion. And it'll really make it so your chest is doing all of the movement. I like to do a half second to a second pause at the bottom. This is what I would do with heavier weight as well. And you can see my elbows on every single rep are flared outwards and they're never dipping. I myself am not capable, even if this bench allowed me to, I am not capable of raising my elbows up to my ears. I have a fairly long neck to begin with. So for me, my range of motion is just out to my shoulders, which is, or in line with my shoulders, I should say, which is, mentioned is the proper way of doing this movement. So as you can see again, about a half second pause at the upper part of the sternum and the lower part of the neck, 
right there in that little space. You'll pause, press up. And this right here is only about a 55 pounds total. It's a 15 pound barbell, two tens, and then the collars themselves weigh about three pounds each. So I would typically go up to about 115 pounds and do this for eight reps and maybe four to six burns, burns at the very end. But I don't ever do very heavy weight on this. One, I'm not capable yet. And two, I feel that when you go up to that high of weight, depending on your own strength, of course, you sacrifice form. And the thing with Vince Duranda is he was very form heavy. Do as many reps as you can with proper form. And then if you're doing above a certain number, go up. And if you can't hit that number, maybe you should go down. Consider lightening the weight, especially if your form is suffering. So make sure to keep the weight relatively light compared to your own strength. This will depend on the individual, of course. And you want to take that half second to a second pause at the bottom. Make sure to twist the wrists inwards. And when you descend, keep those elbows in line with your shoulders. And that's pretty much the movement. You can also see that my back is relatively flat. I'm expanding the chest on the bottom part of the movement, but I am keeping my back relatively flat. And that's pretty much the Gironda neck press. And that concludes this video. If you're interested in any more golden or silver era bodybuilding content, consider following me at my Instagram, Official Forgotten Fitness, and also consider supporting Vince's original supplement company, NSP Nutrition. They make some of the best merchandise, including the best clothing, the books that Vince actually wrote, and in my opinion, the best supplements on the market. You can get Vince's original beef liver tablets and all of his other supplements that he recommended to all of his students and everything laid out in the blueprint to a bodybuilder, including the book itself. So you can use my code Vince10 at checkout for an additional 10% off your purchase. And if you have any questions regarding the Gironda neck press, let me know in the comment section or at my Instagram and I'll make sure to help you out. This is Forgotten Fitness signing out. Bye-bye.